NFL Week 12 previews brought to you by, whew, get comfortable, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six awesome sports books down there. Tunicatravel.com is the place to go to check them out. So go on and do that thing. We also have a football picks contest, so you can win awesome Tunica prizes over at winningcureseverything.com. Go to the website, right up in the top right-hand corner, you're going to have a little thing that says football picks contest. You got 10 games you pick against the spread. Real easy. You can win. So go put in the email, knock that thing out. Let's roll. NFL Week 12, Thanksgiving week. For those that were not here for the college football stuff on Sunday, we have a special guest. Chris is in Disney World. And I am not Chris. He is not Chris. He is my father, Lee Seegers. Uh, he does not do a whole lot of NFL stuff, but he helped us out this go-round. Uh, we are we're, we're going to try and work our way through this. Chris is the NFL guru. As they say, entertainment only. Yes, that's that's what this is. We are we are entertainers today. We will see what we can do. I watch the NFL. I'm not great at it. I can't figure out like it, it's not the same as college. You can't stuff happens that makes no sense. Like how have the Bills won three games this year? <laughs> it makes no sense. So, uh, but it is Thanksgiving week, so obviously a lot of you will be at home with your families, trying to get away from talking to them. And one of the wonderful things that helps you get away from talking to them is football. All lot, day. All day long, from opening kick until the very end of the evening. You don't have to talk about politics. You don't have to talk about, you know, grandma's mustache or anything like that. All you got to do is focus on cowboys and lions and this year the saints. So, uh, let's go on and start off with the Redskins and the Cowboys. Thursday, 3.30 p.m. on Fox. Cowboys, minus 7.5 was the opening line. It's now at, what, 9? Nine's what I found. Nine. The over-under is about 41, somewhere around there. Obviously, if you're going to Tunica, if you're going wherever to bet on these games, the lines will change. Go talk to your attendant about it. They will give you the updated line. Alex Smith broke his leg last week. And on this game, the line doesn't matter, I don't think. I've seen Cole yeah. McCoy play. You've seen Mark Sanchez play. I've seen Mark Chan Sanchez play. Yeah. Play the points. Yeah. <laughs> Colt McCoy is the starter. Uh, this is for the NFC East lead. Like, the Cowboys have won two straight at the Eagles, at the Falcons. And they're playing well right now. Yeah, they're playing really, really well. Which Now, does this kind of say something nice about Jerry Jones, the fact that he is willing to stick with somebody like Jason Garrett when all signs have pointed to it might be time to make a change? I don't think so. It does does stability <laughs> matter in the NFL? How about that? Certain places it does. Would Dallas be one of those places? Dallas is not one that's, of those places. That's kind of what I'm what I'm getting at. Like it could it, with the talent that they have have accrued over the years. Does does keeping Garrett around make them a better football team because they know what to expect or should he go out and get somebody young? And I mean, obviously, they're not going to get rid of him if he wins the division. I wouldn't think. Shouldn't, because Jerry likes continuity. He likes guys that he knows, and he knows Garrett, and he's kept him forever. Even though, you know, it maybe he doesn't deserve to stay in that role. But what is there about the Cowboys that lets you think that there's going to be any stability anyway? But if they see, make a change, that's a good question. That's I don't know that there is anything. Um, I don't know. It's it's it is strange to look at this team and and think that they have a shot at winning a division and going to the playoffs. They they have no real playmakers at wide receiver. Ezekiel Elliott. They never give him the ball enough. Now they have over the last couple of weeks. They finally figured that out. Feed Zeke and you're good. I don't think Dak Prescott. Like I I feel like defenses have caught up to him. I don't know that this is not a great football team. And yet here we are. They got a chance because Alex Smith is out. They got a chance to win a division with six games left. Football is a mysterious it's, game. The NFL is, is a strange, strange beast. 
Uh, let's move on from that one. Let's talk about the Seahawks and the Panthers. The Panthers, three and a half point favorites. Over under is 47 ish. That's probably changed by the time you've watched this. Sunday noon on Fox, the Seahawks, number 11 in total defense. The Panthers, they are number eight in defense against the run. Seattle is the number one rushing offense in the league at 154 uh, yards per game. But the Panthers are number three in running the football. Uh, can Seattle get over the West Coast team traveling east for a noon kickoff? That's what I looked at when I saw this game. That's it. it is almost automatically across the board bet against the West Coast team, right? And you've got two teams that want to control the football. They yeah. want to run the football. It's almost a mirror image. Yeah. What it comes down to is, do you think Russell Wilson is better than Cam Newton? And that, see, that's uh, depends on on better at what, right? Like, is he a better decision maker? Yeah, probably. But I do feel like the Panthers have, and this is in my gambling pick, so go watch the gambling pick video. And if you're on YouTube, by the way, hit subscribe. Help us out a little bit. Uh, and chime in with your opinions, for the love of God. <laughs> we, we want everybody chiming in. Tell me what we did wrong. Uh, I think that Cam Newton has a better supporting cast around him with Carolina. I don't know that Rob Rivera is a better coach than Pete Carroll. Like, Pete Carroll surprises me because we thought that this offensive line was garbage before the season. And, and now they lead the league in rushing. Yeah, and, and they didn't have a running back. And and now they lead the league in per game rushing yardage. And that I mean, that's a testament to what they have have set forth. They they got rid of some of the troublemakers, some of the guys that, that were causing locker room problems. The team seems to be playing together. They're five and five. The Panthers are six and four. The Seahawks are right in the thick of things for a wild card spot. They're they are not gonna win the NFC West. That is the Rams. They they have about got that already locked up. But they're you still could, hanging around. They're hanging around. They got a shot. So, and now they get to travel two thousand miles across the country to play an eleven a.m. kickoff. Yeah. Over under is forty seven. I feel like this might be an under game. I think this is an under game. This is probably an under game. We'll uh, we'll jump from that one. Let's uh, let's talk about Sunday night football. The Packers four five and one at the Vikings, who are five four and one. The Vikings are four and a half point favorites, uh, at least at time of this video. The over-under is 48, Sunday, 7.20 p.m. on NBC. The team's tied 29-29 to in Week 2 at Lambeau. Uh, the Packers lost at Seattle on Thursday, and then the Vikings went and lost at the Bears on Sunday night. Both teams coming off of a loss. Minnesota was my Super Bowl pick before the season started, and I don't know what has happened. Their defense has gotten a touch better over the last few weeks. They didn't really have to do they, – they okay, they looked good against the Bears. The defense did. They got three picks – or three uh, three turnovers. Mitch Trubisky didn't have to do a whole lot because the Vikings offense with Kirk Cousins just couldn't do anything. Well, they can't run the football. And that's what's crazy to me. You know, you, you got an offensive line that we thought was really good before the year – what is it about offensive lines that, that you see talent and you think that they've got chemistry and and something changes? With, because Seattle going from awful to good without a whole lot of personnel changes and then the Vikings without a whole lot of personnel changes goes from really good to eh. I mean, this team was 13-3 was and three last year with Case Keenum at quarterback and had... It lost one guy off defense and and lost very few off the offense. It's kind of the same thing with the Eagles. It's like, you well, your personnel changes made it seem like you were going to be better. better. And now you've kind of, you know, reverted back to the, to the pack a little bit. What is it about offensive lines that can change so quickly? Teams have to be committed from the top of the organization to running the football. If you're not committed to the run and willing to stick with it and make it happen, you're not going to be successful at it. 
So the Vikings' new offensive coordinator is John DeFilippo, who is the former quarterback's coach at Philadelphia. They were, at, and this is such a cliche thing, an RPO team last yes. year. And I think they brought him in for Kirk Cousins to help out with the passing game. Yes. So when you bring in, you make a, a coaching change like that. When you get to the passing game, then you, you, you lose t- what you got on the running side. And that is very frustrating. I think that's uh, – so people sometimes forget that defenses are just as much in effect of the offense – as they are just the defense themselves. Yes. If you've got a good ball control offense that holds the football for a long time, constantly gives you a fresh defense every time they go back out on the field. Then they can make plays. They can make a whole lot of plays if the defense is out there the whole ball game. And I don't even think to look this up. Uh, But time of possession, I'm curious what the Vikings' time of possession is. I'm sure it's not nearly as good as it was last year. Wouldn't think so. So, and Dalvin Cook obviously being out for a majority of the year, not a good thing. I'm not sure what way to lean on this one. I'm not going to bet it. Uh, four and a half seems like a lot against Aaron Rodgers, but I don't know. Mike McCarthy has been so bad this year. <laughs> I mean, just in his in game situations have. I don't know how he keeps his job at the end of the year. Even if they go on a run and they, they make the playoffs. I just don't see any way. I mean, they're three back of the, well, two and a half back of the uh, the Bears right now in the division. And I don't see any way that they catch up to them. No, I don't either. I mean, it, it makes no sense to me how they could either. possibly catch them. Uh, we'll move from that. Monday Night Football. The Tennessee Titans 5-5 five and five at the Texans 7-3. and three. The Texans are a six-point favorite, at least at, uh, at the time of this. The over-under 41-and-a-half-ish. Monday, 7.15 p.m. on ESPN. Is Marcus Mariota going to be healthy? That is, I would think that's a key to the game. The Texans have won seven straight, and all seven have felt like they probably should have been losses. They were gifted five of them, and the other two were, I mean, against the Redskins, Alex Smith goes out, and they still like had to have a pick six. But they got to pick six. I mean, they got to pick six, which is what you were talking about with Colt McCoy. And I, I get you. Um, they're playing really good defensively, right? And and, and they're not making – several weeks. They're not making dumb mistakes. They're not beating themselves. Is Deshaun Watson – like, is he like a locker room cure? Like, is <laughs> – because the Texans were really bad without him. And I understand that, like, quarterbacks – this is a quarterback's league. Yes. Early in the season – Watson looked like he was rusty. It was, and obviously he was coming back from an injury. Yes, he looks good right now. He's not great by any means, but the kid just knows how to win football games. He knows how to lead, and when you have somebody that can take a team and point them in the right direction, that's the reason they call it professional football. Yeah, they're all good players. I mean, they all got talent for sure. They just need leadership. Yeah. And need to be coached correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's – all right, so the Titans did beat the Texans back in week two. Early. Early, early on. And they, they beat them without Marcus Mariota because Mariota got hurt in the uh, in the first game down in Miami. Blaine Gabbert was the quarterback. They ran a whole lot of trick plays, all this kind of crap. Can Vrabel do that again? As well as the Texans are playing defensively, I don't think so. I don't think it matters whether Mariota plays or not. You're probably right. You're probably right. Uh, We'll move off of that one. Let's go on and jump into game number five. And these are the biggest slash most interesting because there's not a ton of big ones this week. But uh, game number five, Steelers at 7-2-1. They are second in the AFC right now. They're three-and-a-half-point favorites at the Broncos uh, the over under is forty seven and a half. Sunday, three twenty five p.m. on CBS, God's time zone. Broncos were uh, they they were they were winners at the Chargers last week. Kind of surprising. The Chargers were seven and two. Broncos are now four and six. They were three and six going into that game. 
The uh, Steelers came back from a 16 to nothing deficit at Jacksonville last week with about two minutes left in the third quarter. The only issue that I see, because obviously Steel, the Steelers have never had good uh, results, really, when they go to Denver to play. Like, mm-hmm. high altitude kind of changes everything. It's going to be really cold. I mean, Pittsburgh's used to it being cold. But uh, the other side of this is Denver is the number 22 team in total defense. And against the Steelers, like, they will find a weakness. And and uh, Roby is is out, the, the star cornerback for Denver. He played, I think, 60 of the 76 snaps against uh, the Chargers last week. And he is out in concussion protocol now. So he is uh, about 75 80% not going to play. And if you got Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster, that could be a problem when they were already not great on defense anyway. Sometimes the Steelers just kind of show up late. <laughs> they just decide, eh, I think we might play today. Like, we might we might decide to play. I was trying to keep up with them the other day, and I I checked, and they had the football at their own 30-yard line with a minute and 45 seconds left. So I flipped it off <laughs> and forgot about it. And, then and the you, next thing I know, they have won the ball game. They've won the ball game. I so I turned that game on. Uh, late when it, it so I record all of them on YouTube TV, which by the way, and we don't get paid for the YouTube TV stuff, but that is the best thing that's ever been invented. If if y'all don't have it, you need to go get it. It's awesome. I can DVR everything, like it's unlimited DVR. So so I've got it set to DVR every NFL game that comes on, every college football game that comes on, so that I can go back and watch whenever something is interesting in case I missed it. So I went back and just, before I even knew about a final score, I just went back and watched from the time that it was 16 to nothing. Because when I turned it on, the Steelers were driving for the win. So I just went back and said, well, when did they, like, what happened? They were down 16 to nothing late in the third quarter. Yeah. And then you just watch them, like, decide, okay, yeah, we're going to show up. It's time to play now. And Jacksonville, which, and, and we're not even discussing Jacksonville today, but good gracious, the Jaguars, Ben Roethlisberger talked about this in his postgame press conference where he was discussing, like, all of the guys that were counting his interceptions and, like, letting him know when he made a boneheaded play. And it was all of the guys from the Jags that were just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for a 3-7 and seven football team to be talking trash, that just blows my mind. <laughs> like, I have, I, I have no idea why they would think that's a good idea. But is that not the same team that put the Steelers out of the playoffs last year? It, yes, it was. But this year is is a different it's year. It's a different year. And now I think stylistically, like that's a that's a bad matchup for the Steelers. Yes. Like for whatever reason, they just it, it, the Jags can be complete crap, but they are always going to play the Steelers tough because it's stylistically a challenge. Yeah. But man, I am that floored me. That floored me. <laughs> Uh, so as far as the Steelers and the Broncos go, I don't think the Broncos have the defense to to be able to hang in this one, but I have seen crazier things happen. So I'm not going to make a pick on this one. But if I had to go one way, I'd go the Steelers minus three and a half on that. The Steelers are hot right now. Yeah, they they are. And and while they didn't look it on Saturday, uh, they did push the closing line. So <laughs> like they didn't lose. Um, but if you bet them early in the week at six, yeah, you you lost that one. <laughs> Uh, honorable mention games: the Bears minus three and a half at the Lions. The Bears are seven and three. The Lions are four and six. Over unders forty six and a half on this one. That is Thanksgiving Day, eleven thirty a.m. on CBS. Feel kind of good about the Bears. They're uh, they're on a bit of a hot streak right now. Their offense is kind. They're doing what they're supposed to do when you've got a defense that is as dominant as this one. Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith, like that bunch, and that that front seven is just unreal. Like for, along with Matt Nagy, Nagy, however you say his name, uh, they brought in this new coach who's an offensive guy. They brought him in for Mitch Trubisky. 
for them to flip that defense around and just be as as dominant as they have been, that is that is impressive. They are very good. The Dolphins. Uh, or no, no, no. Let's let's move to uh, Thursday night. Let's stick on Thanksgiving. Thursday night, Falcons at the Saints. Saints minus thirteen. Over unders fifty nine. It's Thursday, seven twenty p.m. That is the NBC game. The Saints have won and covered eight straight games. That is insane. Now they've they've won nine straight. I'm sorry, they've covered eight straight because they didn't cover against the Browns in Week Two. But man, this team is red hot. Like this is the hottest team in the NFL right now. Uh, Thirteen. I don't know if that's enough points. I just don't <laughs> like even against the Falcons with a really good offense. The Saints' defense has been pretty lights out, but nothing compared to what their offense is because they are. The last two weeks, yeah. they've been averaging 50 points a week. I mean, they put up 48 on the Eagles last week and then 51 on the Bengals on the road the week before. And the Falcons have kind of The Falcons flipped. are terrible on defense. Terrible. Awful. Uh, last two games in the honorable mention, Dolphins at the Colts. Both teams 5-5, five and five, but two teams headed in completely different directions. The Colts, uh, minus 10 is the line right now. The over-under is 51. It's Sunday, 325 p.m. on CBS. That will be interesting to see whether or not Andrew Luck's hot streak continues rolling or not. Brock Eisweiler uh, looked decent for the first couple of weeks that he was in with the Dolphins, but right now they need Ryan Tannehill back so bad. He's Brock, still Brock Osweiler. He's still Brock Osweiler. He's not a, a good quarterback, good gracious. But in this league right now, he could end up making you know $13 million next year as a backup somewhere. So as long as he's serviceable, if you got a decent defense, he might be all right. The Browns at the Bengals are the last game. I don't really know why I put this as an honorable mention. I think it's interesting just to see what the Browns do right now. Uh, this offense under Freddie Kitchens has been pretty good the last couple of weeks. Uh, week one was uh, was a test. Like we'll just see, but but then you know they uh, they showed up pretty well against the Falcons. Um, whew. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of this one. The Bengals are, are headed in the wrong direction. But they are three-point favorites at home against the Browns. The over-under is 47.5. It is Sunday at noon on CBS. I just want to see what Baker Mayfield does. Like I think that's what everybody wants. Like it, they, This game is interesting because of him. Just let me be entertained. That, exactly. Entertain me. Like, Baker, do something. And and he will do something in this game that will that will make you go, huh, okay. Like that's why they fired the coach. Like they they want this dude running the uh, the team. Okay, all right, I got it. So did you see where they wanted to interview Condoleezza Rice? <laughs> I give up. So and and they're gonna interview Greg Williams for the job, right? Greg Williams is is certifiably insane. Like no, that will not happen. So I don't know who's going to be their coach. I, they will probably go hire Lincoln Riley or somebody along those lines. But just shut up talking to the media about Condi Rice and Greg Williams and whatnot. You know they ain't going to get the job. All right, that's going to wrap up the NFL Week 12 preview. We gave you the information that you need to be a winner. Go down to Tunica, Mississippi. Put some action on your favorite games. They got six awesome sports books. TunicaTravel.com is the place to go to get more information. And as always... Head over to winningcureseverything.com to get everything you need on us. Hit us on Facebook. Hit us on Twitter. Leave some comments. Let us know what we got wrong. We'll see you guys on the next one.